times we depend upon the preacher or the pastor or one individual. Some churches and ministries have expanded themselves to have a pastoral care department or pastoral care, which is the nurturing part of the gospel. But did you not know we have people in our congregations that have trained that God has given them a gift of care and nurture? And you may be out there watching me. You have a LCPC or MSW. You're a licensed uh, 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 social worker. You're a clinician. Did you not know that because God sensitized you in that area, and that is a vocation, that in the marketplace of ministry, God is also calling you to take that same uh, understanding of mental health and wholeness and apply it to the gospel. Luke says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus talks about that because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to bring release to the captive and the recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And so therefore, the question becomes, when people are wounded and bruised, how do we help them? People are going through trauma from PTSD to moral injury to all the other issues. And sometimes we say pray about it, but we have to watch and pray. I believe that the gospel calls for us in all modalities and areas of life to be able to say what is the biblical mandate of healing, deliverance, and setting people free that they may live holistic and healthy lives. And so what I begin to do is call on pastors, those who have been to seminary or Bible school, those who have not, but you do pastoral work, pastoral care, to sit down and have some dialogue with those who've gone to the schools, social work schools, and have been trained as certified by the state, as certified by the organizations as mental health care professionals. Some of you work for HR. Some of you are counselors. Uh, you, you, you work with the human dilemma of life, I believe. Uh, that you are a part of God's arm and a part of the church's arm of pastoral care and mental health care. And so we have a division where we try to bring pastors and clergy and leaders together with those who have gone to the universities, to the social work schools, and have trained in mental health care and have been certified to do mental health, to do counseling, uh, to do all kinds of work because Thessalonians talks about may the God of peace sanctify you wholly, both spirit, soul, and body, and give you peace. Third John writes to Gaius, I pray that you prosper and be in health, be in health, as thy soul prosper, your soul, your mind, your will, and emotion must have prosperity. So your health is directly related to the quality of your soul, according to the scriptures, your soul your body and your spirit working together in the unity that God has called us to be. The gospel of the kingdom must reach all of all parts of us, our spirit, our soul, and our bodies. And so our pastoral care and mental health care providers network, if you go on our website, you'll see that department. We will be bringing you excerpts from from time to time, from that division, we'll have people that will come in as clinicians, apostolic clinicians, saved, loved God, to share with issues regarding mental health. And then we have also our special ministry to our veterans, our veterans that have gone into the theater and have served and come back uh, with issues of kind of moving back into the community. Uh, we talk about PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, but that is not a, that's a disorder, but it also affects all of us, not only those who are uh, veterans, they, they have their, their trauma, but their people in everyday life is traumatized. I say we have two PTSDs. We have post-traumatic stress disorder and present traumatic stress disorder. Some of us are in trauma every day. We go through trauma. We, we're doctors, we're lawyers, we're pastors, we're lay people. We work in the marketplace, we work in life, but we have experienced trauma in our childhood, trauma in our history, uh, in our teenage years, trauma in our adult years, and some of us are being trauma. Some of you all are traumatized just as I speak right now. 
So how do we deal with trauma, move past our trauma? And also now the newest discovery that has been uh, celebrated by the veterans is moral injury. Not only in the, in the veterans community, but in our communities. People are shot down and killed, and it goes against the moral fabric, and they walk around feeling guilty and frustrated because of what they've done. They've taken somebody's life. How do they walk through those mental issues, and how do they become whole, or how do they begin to deal with the traumatized of life? The biblical text says, be not anxious for nothing. But by everything, by prayer and fasting, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep our hearts and minds. But how do you do that? To read the scripture? How do, how do you move? Be, well, let's pray about it. Well, how do I pray? Who do I talk to? Who walks out with me in the various modalities of healing and miracles and deliverances and strength in my daily life? And so uh, the Princeton Institute, we're, we're going to be talking about those kinds of issues as well as studying the Word of God and taking a look at the, the Word of God. Sometime we'll be doing a Bible study. Sometime we'll be sharing from a vast variety of things. But I just kind of want to take this first day of us being on to let you know what to expect. So on Wednesdays, just come prepared. You never know, but I promise you we will always have myself and others on to share and talk and dialogue about the issues of the church as the body of Christ, the issues of the church and the kingdom of God and how we ought live and how we ought work and how we become healed. How do we be, how do we maintain our health and our salvation? God has called us to himself to be sanctified, but how do we maintain an ongoing sanctification. How do we grow in grace? How we move from milk to begin to be meat eaters and growers? How do we grow and live our lives daily so that the God of peace sanctify us according to Thessalonians whole? Sanctify us holy. So those are the kinds of things we're looking forward to talk to you, to discuss with you, and to bring some of our guests on and I'll be, some of you that know me, you know I'll be calling on you to join me in the studio every Wednesday, every Wednesday, mark your calendar, every Wednesday, the Brinson Institute will be on from two to three, a whole hour, just to talk and share with what God is doing. I'm excited. One of the things uh, that I'm excited about, even God has blessed us, we also have a community Bible study. Those of you that are free during Wednesday. So this is like the second round for us because every Wednesday from 11 to 1 o'clock, from 11 to 1 o'clock at 8600 South Bishop, at our headquarters, the Center for Apostolic Empowerment, 8600 South Bishop and the lower level, we study the Sunday school lesson. And we really get into it. And so for those of you that do the Sunday school lesson, we use the international standard uh, version of the Sunday school lesson. So whatever materials you're using, whether it's the Baptist or precepts or the standard or whatever your denomination is, if you're using the international Sunday school lessons theme, those of you that use that, you know that this coming Sunday, the Sunday school lesson is about Jesus about the Gabriel coming to Mary, uh, talking to her and letting her know that she was going to be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. So we come and we talk and we share. We call it our community Bible study. It's open to anybody uh, from the community, from any church, any group to come and study the lesson. We sit around the table and have coffee and tea and share every Wednesday. So next Wednesday, I know the holidays are here, but every Wednesday, you, if you're not doing anything, you can make your way over to our headquarters, the Center for Apostolic Empowerment at 8600 South Bishop. The church sits right there on the corner. We're in the facility of the way, the Salvation Baptist Church, in the lower level through the side door. And we have a great time. Wow, the lesson was just really deep today. A great time. And so these are some of the things we do and make ourselves available. Those of you that are looking for a Bible college and a seminary to do some study and some training, give us a call. We have a Bible college and seminary, and we do associates and bachelors and masters and doctorate degrees 
in the areas of biblical study, ministry, pastoral care, Christian education, music and the, and the sacred arts, finance and church administration. Uh, so therefore, if you in need to further your education in the kingdom of God, we're trying to e equip the body of Christ in the kingdom of God and the church and the community to train uh, to train you to go back out into the church community and uh, do business in excellence. Do business in excellence. Paul tells Timothy, he said, Timothy, I got to make a run. I'll be back. But until I come back, I want you to give, uh, 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 I want you to think about three things. There are three things I want you to do. Number one, I want you to give your time to reading, exhortation, and doctrine. Paul told Timothy that. Why? Well, Paul says to Timothy, I need you to read. I need you to read. I need you to study to show yourself approved. I need you to read. One of our challenges is not so much to read, but what we read. How do we contextualize what we read? Because now we live in a society, as the biblical text says, in the last days, people shall go to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. So knowledge has increased. I mean, whatever you want to know, since we have the internet and Google, just about anything you want to know, you can ask the question and come up with information. The information network, the information system is out here. There's so much information out here. But the question is, what is the correct information? The question is, how do I contextualize or how do I make sense out of what I read, what I know? And how do I discuss it and how do I live it out and how do I utilize it in my everyday life? And so if we're going to be active brothers and sisters in the faith, we need to be reading. If I listen to a body, uh, listen to a person talk, you that listen to people talk and share and they have their opinions. Some of them come on talk radio or whatever. You can just about tell who they read or what have they read are they read are they well read do they read do they study their material because sometimes we can repeat stuff we've heard but never research it and sometimes we have to keep up our job is to give and teach a change less gospel to a changing community a changing society our job is to how do we look at the biblical text and and, and within the biblical text be organic in our biblical text Understand How do we read the Bible, the Bible, the word of God, and study the Bible and then read it and, and teach it and exegete it and train it and let God give his revelations from the text? Because a lot of times we bring questions to the text that the text was not designed to answer. Then we try to make it. So how do we read the text? How do we read other materials? How do we make sense? Because God did not operate in the vacuum. He said, any of you that lack wisdom, let them ask of God. But if we lack wisdom, no one really looks for wisdom unless they possess understanding and knowledge. Why do I need wisdom if I don't have knowledge? What do I need wisdom for if I don't understand my knowledge? So in all my getting, I need to get an understanding. So if I go out for knowledge and go out for reading and whatever the modalities are to give me knowledge, Knowledge puffs up by itself. So once I receive the knowledge, I do the studying and reading, I need to understand it. And so in all my getting, I must get an understanding of what I do read and study. Now, once I get an understanding of what I'm reading and study, the question is, how do I apply it? To my everyday life how do I apply it in my conversation how do I apply it to others that I engage so I must read I must require knowledge inquire about knowledge then I must contextualize what I read and get an understanding of it and in that contextualization of once I understand and understand because remember Philip when he joined himself to the chariot to the eunuch he asked them a question. Now the eunuch was coming back from the celebration reading scripture. Philip's question wasn't, hey there, what's up? What you reading? He said, do you understand what you read? Oh, we could read the Bible. Oh, I read 40 verses. Oh, I'm reading this book and that. But do you understand? So Philip asked the eunuch, do you understand what you read? He said, how can I unless I have somebody else? I need an other 
to be in dialogue. We need others to be in dialogue as we have an understanding because we can understand, but we have to compare notes also to broaden our understanding of a thing or a subject or a topic. So it is as those of us who live in this world and participate as members of the body of Christ, the church ecclesia living in the marketplace in the municipality of life. And so in all of my reading, I must get an understanding. Now once I get an understanding, the application of my understanding is I can have knowledge to know, I can understand, but I mean lack under wisdom in the application. So if I lack wisdom, because I got knowledge and understanding, but I lack wisdom, now I can ask of God who gives it liberally. God gives wisdom, but God just don't drop wisdom into you. He drops wisdom in through covenant. Let me suggest that wisdom comes through covenant. Wisdom comes through engagement. When everybody came to hear the wisdom of Solomon, why? Because Solomon was engaging others in dialogue based upon what he understood, based upon from what he knew. So as we take our wisdom, our knowledge, our understanding, our experience, the Holy Spirit, and all of the faculties of uh, uh, what God gave us in our relationship with others and in our world, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and other parts of the world, it helps us now to become much more whole and broadened in our perspective of what the gospel is. So we have to learn what, what does, does it mean, mean uh, to be organically biblical. I